Today in Afghanistan, nine Americans were killed. Eight of them were soldiers. One was a civilian. That is the most number, uh, the largest number of U.S. troops killed in a single attack since 2005 in Afghanistan. All nine of these Americans were working as trainers for the Afghan security forces. They were at the Kabul airport. It was a member of the Afghan security forces, an Air Force officer who was the perpetrator of the attack. If that type of attack in which an Afghan in uniform kills Americans in Afghanistan uh, sounds familiar, that may be because an Afghan army recruit killed six U.S. soldiers in a grenade attack less than two weeks ago. Last week, a man wearing an Afghan army uniform killed two other people inside the Afghan defense ministry. There have been at least four other instances this year in which uniformed Afghans who are, again, supposed to be our allies in that war, who are supposed to be working alongside Americans, uniformed Afghans instead used their access to Americans to kill Americans, or at least to try to. Right now, the overall explanation for how we get out of the Afghanistan war is in part a they-stand-up-we-stand-down thing. Uh, You may remember that from our other war in Iraq. The mission to train Afghan security forces is supposed to be so important, it is our path out of that country. Afghan trainees repeatedly killing American trainers and American service members they are supposed to be serving alongside. That casts a considerable cloud over the prospects for this as a path out of Afghanistan for the U.S. military. If thinking about this stuff, you have concluded that maybe we need some fresh thinking about our military challenges, about our war in Afghanistan. Today's big national security news will probably not enthuse you. Uh, Once again, we have learned that somebody from the CIA will be running the military from now on, and somebody from the military will now be running the CIA. As President Obama will announce from the Rose Garden tomorrow, Defense Secretary Bob Gates is retiring, as he has been saying for a while now that he would. General David Petraeus uh, will be retiring from his more than three-decade-long military career. He will be coming home from Afghanistan to run the CIA. The current CIA director will leave his job, Leon Panetta, uh, in order to take Bob Gates's old job leading the Defense Department. Also, the previous ambassador to Iraq, Ryan Crocker, will become the new ambassador to Afghanistan. If that all sounds like musical chairs, it's because that's musical chairs. Back in 1947, an anonymous Foreign Service officer published an article in the magazine Foreign Affairs, published it under the name Mr. X. He did not want to use his real name because he did not want to jeopardize his gig in the diplomatic corps, but he wanted to make an argument for what he called firm and vigilant containment of Russian expansive tendencies, or as the fundamental national security strategy of the Cold War would come to be known, uh, containment. The Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars at Washington, D.C. just published what they are essentially billing as the follow-up to Mr. X 64 years later. The author of this piece uh, is in reality two guys, um, 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 uh, two officers, a a Marine officer and a Navy officer. But in the paper, they are bylined as Mr. Y. Their case for what ought to be the new big idea animating all of American national security thinking now is that we need international strength and influence that doesn't rely completely on a giant and, frankly, overused, expensive military. Joining us now for the interview is a man who's done more than anybody else in the last decade to articulate that the, the, the same type of big rethinking of American power. Uh, he is Andrew Basevich. His latest book is called Washington Rules, America's Path to Permanent War. It's now out in paperback. He's a professor of international relations and history at Boston University. Uh, professor Basevich, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Um, how important is uh, the Mr. Y um, idea and a publication of this time and uh, of this type at this time? That was a nice setup. And it was a nice setup because I think you really were putting your finger on the big problem that the uh, sort of uh, rearranging of the deck chair is exchange of people who we don't think of people who have ideas, Panetta, Petraeus, I think uh, is indicative of the absence of strategic thinking in the capital for the last 10 years, which brings us to Mr. Y. I think the Mr. Y essay is of interest less because of the content, more because of who wrote it. Uh, This uh, Navy captain, uh, Marine Corps colonel, uh, and what they're essentially saying is our approach to national security policy has been excessively militarized. We should uh, focus on engagement rather than effort to control or dominate the world. And I think of particular significance, they say, we really need to pay more attention to what happens inside the country. They they use this phrase, sustainable prosperity. 
In other words, prosperity is not simply what the profits your company made over the last quarter. Prosperity needs to be something that looks to the long term, and sustainable prosperity means that the country should be diverting some of its resources from the Department of Defense to building infrastructure, uh, developing an educated uh, citizenry. Now, I think what's important here is that it's coming from two serving military officers. Mm -hmm. Um, Many people, I think, might believe that. Proponents of change uh, in the realm of national security might think that the officer corps is likely to be a place that's resistant to change. And these guys, I think, help us understand that the officer corps may well be a constituency supportive of change. And what I'd tell you is, it ain't just these two guys. Uh, One of the things that's uh, really impressed me since my last book came out is the tremendous number of emails that I've been getting from serving officers, not of my acquaintance, who are basically saying, you're right, things are screwed up, we need to take a different approach. I'm not getting emails from three- and four-star generals. Actually, it's better. I'm getting emails from the captains and the majors and lieutenant colonels, meaning the coming generation of military leadership. And that really gives me hope that if we could have a serious debate about national security in this country, we may actually find that members of the officer corps are supportive of change that will be in the interest of the country as a whole. Do you think it's likely that we could have that debate? Do you see a political, I mean, you're, you're a keen political observer as well as a keen military observer. Do you see us as as moving toward having a real discussion about that? Well, the, the officer corps is not going to trigger that debate. I mean, the, the, the debate has to come from our civilian leadership. And there I do, I do, uh, 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 I wouldn't say I despair, but I come close to despair yeah. uh, because, um, to put it bluntly, it seems to me that uh, civilian leaders in the Democratic Party, that has to be where the impetus for change comes from in this regard, uh, have not demonstrated the necessary moral courage to take the sort of political risks uh, that would be required to say, we've gone down the wrong path. Uh, We are not going to dominate the world with American military power. Uh, We are going to bankrupt the country. Uh, We are going to uh, squander whatever moral standing we have. Uh, And and therefore, there needs to be an honest, nonpartisan debate about what alternatives may be. I think, I think Mr. Y has given us some suggestive thoughts about what those alternatives uh, uh, could be, but it's got to come from our political leadership. Andrew Basevich, author of Washington Rules, America's Path to Permanent War, professor of international relations and history uh, at BU, Boston University, and um, yourself, somebody who had a long career in the U.S. Army. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's always a real pleasure, really eye-opening to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.